Welcome back. We're going to look at section 1.2 for another day here, uh, simplifying complex rational expressions. And today we're going to get a little more complex, a little uglier, a little nastier looking. So in example one, we have 2 times this big quantity, x plus 3 my, over x minus 2 squared times this quantity. And what I'll show you today is kind of how we're going to break things up and move things around. So to start with, I'm going to rewrite 2 as a fraction as 2 over 1, because this is 2 times this fraction times this fraction. So I have 2 over 1 times this fraction. When we have a quantity to an exponent, we can take the numerator and denominator and take it to both, both of them to that same exponent. So we can write this as the quantity of x plus 3 squared over x minus 2 squared. And again, we're going to have a multiplication times here we're going to multiply the 1 through and this 1 through as well as this negative through. So I've got up here the quantity of x minus 2 minus x minus 3. Again, I'm going to break up that numerator and denominator. So it's over x minus 2 squared. I can go inside this quantity and clean this up a little bit. The x's are going to cancel. Negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. So now I can go ahead and combine things that are similar. And when I say similar, it can mean a lot of different things. 1, 2 times negative 5, those are both monomials. We know what 2 times negative 5 is. That gives us negative 10. We're going to leave x plus 3 squared alone because we don't really need to multiply that out. And on the bottom, our denominator, we have 1 times a quantity times another quantity. Notice the bases of these quantities are the same, x minus 2. So we can add the exponents to simplify that. So we have x minus 2 to the fourth. And that's going to be a nice, clean, simplified answer. In example 2, we're going to work a little bit more with negative exponents. So here, Remember, a negative exponent we can make positive by taking it to the denominator if it's in a numerator. But we can only take it to the denominator of that term. When I talk about a term, remember we separate that with a plus or a minus sign. So here is one term. Here is one term. There's one term and there's one term. Notice we separated the two numerators terms with a minus sign and on the bottom sign with a plus sign. So to make them positive, we're going to write it as x plus 2 divided by x minus, our 3 is going to stay on in the numerator, the denominator is going to be x plus 1. It's going to be over our x minus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 3 divided by x plus 1. Now again, this is all being squared. I'm going to kind of leave that out there until the end. We know it's there. It's going to make it kind of a little more messy if we don't just kind of leave it for a second. So I can go ahead and find a common denominator for the numerator. Notice they're both separate. They're both different. We can't just add a plus 1 here. We have to go through multiplication. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our x plus 2 is going to need an x plus 1. Our common denominator, of course, was x times x plus 1. Hopefully you saw that before I started there. <clears throat> the 3 is going to need an x, so that that denominator looks like x times x plus 1. In our denominator, well, this denominator we can break up into x times x plus 1, which is going to be very nice in the end. Notice we're going to see a common denominator. So we have x times x plus 1 as our common denominator. This numerator doesn't need anything. We already have x times x plus 1. The 3, however, is going to need an x to make it look like x times x plus 1. Now we can go ahead and distribute and clean this up. We can clean this denominator up. We're also going to change this from a division problem to a multiplication problem. So if we multiply this out, we get x squared plus 3x plus 2. Remember, you've got to multiply the x to the 1 and the 2 to the x and add those together to get that middle term. 2 times 1 gives us our 2. So we end up with an x squared plus 2 in a numerator. 
That's going to be divided by our common denominator of x times x plus 1. <clears throat> We're going to change this division to multiplication, and that's going to flip this part here. So we're going to have x times x plus 1 divided by, up here we have x plus 3x gives us 4x minus 1. Now we have a multiplication problem. We can cancel common terms on top and bottom, or numerator and denominator. So our x's are going to cancel, and then x plus 1 is going to cancel. We can't cancel anything out of these two terms. We have a binomial and a binomial, and they're not exactly the same. So our final answer is going to be x squared plus 2 divided by 4x minus 1. And that's going to be our final example for complex rationals today. Good luck.